Hey, what's up everyone? Lee Lowell here from SmartOptionSeller.com. How's everyone doing today? We're back for another edition of our free YouTube option strategy videos here. Today is Saturday, February 25th, 2023. As you can see on the screen right here, the Smart Option Seller Guide to Buying Call Options. We're going back to basics here. We're going back to the beginning to the very most basic of all options trading strategies, which is buying call options. I still get many emails from readers wanting to know, Lee, I need to start from the beginning. How do I, how do I start with options? I, I need to know what they are. Can you tell me about call options, what they are, how to use them? So today's lesson is really basically call option buying 101. We're starting from the beginning. So if you've never bought call options before, or you're interested in learning about call options, how to use them, why people use them, how they're priced, probabilities and all that, then we've got a good one for you today. So I'm going to, I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going to show you what call option buying is all about and how to go about picking, picking strike prices, looking at expiration dates. We'll look at an option chain. So we're going to figure it all out today. So let's get this. Let's just jump right in and get started. So before we, we actually get into the technical items about how to, you know, how to buy call options and, and, and what they are and what they're made of and, and their pricing, I just want to give a few caveats here. You know, a lot of people will, will approach call option buying as a, as a very speculative type of uh, trading or investment. OK, it's they, they use it as more of a, hey, I'm just going to take a shot. I'm just going to buy some call options. I'm going to, you know, just see see what could happen. You know, that's really just speculating. That's gambling. Or on the other hand, are you an investor? Do you want to buy call options to invest? Meaning you want to be in for the long haul. You want to give the, the stock an opportunity to make the move that it can make. And you're, you're going to be there for, you know, months, maybe a year longer with these call options. Or are you just there saying, you know what? I'm just putting some money down like I'm in Vegas. And, you know, if the stock moves in the right direction, the, the, then, then I'm happy. Otherwise, I, I don't really care. You know, so a lot of people, will come to the table with that type of mentality where they're just going to gamble on on a play they don't really know much about the stock they 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 heard it from somewhere say hey the, you know they're in a chat room hey this stock's going up you got to buy some call options so they figure all right well you know i just i heard it on the internet maybe i'll just put down some money and and, and buy some call options well you know if you're going to do that, then, then you really have no business in, in being in the options trading game because in the long run, you're going to lose money if you're trading like that. OK, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here to try to help you understand, you know, what call option buying is all about and how you you can become successful in the long run. Now, if you want to take a high flyer speculative trade every once in a while, you know, that's fine. That's fun for all of us. But if you're here to make money and, and you want to have longevity in the game, you have to understand how these things work. And you really have to know that, you know, trading on very short term basis like that, it, it's a crapshoot. OK, so I just want to, you know, lay some groundwork here. And then the other thing is that, you know, with, with all options contracts, they have an expiration date. So if the stock doesn't make the move by the by the expiration date, you're going to lose your money. So you have to understand, you know, how much time am I willing to give this stock a, a chance to move? You know, options uh, expiration dates, you can trade one day options, zero day options, meaning they expire that same day. You can trade weekly options, monthly options, three month options one year out in time, three years out in time. So there's a lot of decisions to make when there's when you're trading options. And I think that's one thing that that turns a lot of people off is there's too many decisions to make. So they're just going to go with buying the cheapest option on the board. And by cheapest, I mean how much it costs you in dollars, actual dollars. Say, so, yeah, this thing only cost me 50 bucks. I'm going to give it a shot. You know, with those cheaper options, sometimes they're um, the probability of winning is very, very low. OK, so we're going to we're going to look at some of that. We're going to look at some probabilities. OK, so the, get those those, you know, caveats out of the way. Let's start talking about, you know, what call options actually are and, and how they work. So we're going to look at call options from the from the buyer's perspective, from the option buyer, the call option buyer's perspective. Now, one thing I want to say is that you never want to sell call options naked, just selling a call option. It's extremely risky. You have unlimited upside risk involved. You don't want to do that. So I never want to tell anyone to sell 
naked call options. Now, if you're selling covered calls, that's different. We talked about covered calls last week. That means you already have some shares in your account to offset any any loss you may take on the call options. But selling naked call options, we don't do. So we're going to talk about call options from the buyer's perspective here. You're you're going to be the call option buyer. So so what do why do people actually want to buy call options in the first place? Well, number one, mostly because the the actual dollars that you'll spend compared to buying the stock is going to be a lot cheaper. It's going to save you a lot of money, which means your 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 downside risk is going to be a lot less. Now, all option contracts are comprised of 100 shares of stock. So we always have to compare the cost of buying an option versus how much it would cost to buy 100 shares of stock. And, and stocks are expensive. And a lot of people just don't have all that cash to buy 100 shares of stock. So buying call options is a way to reduce your capital outlay. You put up a lot less money than it would cost to buying 100 shares of stock. So that's the real appeal to buying options, whether you're going to buy a put option or a call option. Um, we're talking about call options here, but but any option that you buy is going to be a lot less than what it would cost to buy 100 shares of stock. So that's how we always have to compare the, you know, the actual dollar cost, the return on investment and all that. So for most call option buyers, the main reason that they'll they'll buy a call option is because it costs a lot less. OK, so we're up here. We're looking at <clears throat> the reasons why people buy call options. And um, and also very important is that you have to be bullish on the stock that you're taking. Otherwise, you're going to lose money. You know, why buy something if you're not bullish on the stock? So if you're going to be a call option buyer, you have to be bullish on the stock. All right. And call options tr are investments just like stocks are. Call option prices will, will fluctuate. They can go higher and lower. It's not like when you buy a call option, it stays at that same price the whole time throughout the expiration cycle. That call option value is going to move up and down. And that call option values... Uh, the price or the value is called the premium. So when people say, uh, I'm going to buy a call option, well, they have to pay a price for that call option. That's the premium. So whatever that option costs, that's what you pay for it. And where are we right about here? A call option's value or its premium is, de is determined by a number of factors. But the three most important are, you know, what the stock price is, how many days until the expiration date, and the volatility of that stock. So you got three main factors there that help determine an option's price. And it goes through the Black-Scholes formula. I talked about that in, in an earlier video. And then once that option value is, is calculated, then it just trades on supply and demand. You know, how many option buyers are there out there? How many option sellers are there out there? So the supply and demand in the market will help move that, that option price. But, but, but the option price itself is calculated uh, mostly by the stock price the days of expiration and the volatility. Okay, we're going to look at some we're going to look at some option um, prices in a minute, but we want to just talk about you know what these things are. Okay, and all call options are designated designated by their strike price. The strike price is the the value or the 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 price of the stock that you're willing to potentially buy the shares at. So you know if the stock's at a hundred, you don't want to buy the stock at a hundred. You're going to buy let's say a hundred and twenty dollar call option. That one twenty call option that's the strike price. One hundred and twenty is the strike price. That means you're you're setting yourself up to potentially buy the stock at one hundred twenty dollars a share sometime in the future. Now th there's two ways to look at it. Number one. You're buying the option to trade the option itself. Like if you buy the option at one price, you're looking to sell that option at a higher price. You know, buy and sell. Just like stocks, you want to buy it at one price, sell it at another. You can do the same thing with options. You could buy it at one price and sell it at another price. But you, a call option also allows you to take hold of the, the, the stock at a certain price if you decide to exercise the option at expiration. So if you bought a, a 120 call option and all of a sudden the stock rises up to $200, that allows you to buy that, that stock for $120 while it's currently at 200. So you would exercise that call option. Um, but, but most people, I'd say majority of people don't, aren't really, they don't really want to ex exercise the option and pay all that money to buy the stock. They just want to buy the option price 
and then sell that same option at another price sometime in the future and try to make a profit in between. So there's lots of option buying and selling, and there's not a lot of exercising of the options, okay? So what we're gonna look at today is more about, you know, how much money you can make by buying and selling the option itself. We're not gonna talk about uh, exercising the, the, the option into actual shares of stock, okay? So um, let me move myself over here a little bit so you can see the words a little bit better, okay? So, <clears throat> As we said, the options are designated by their strike price right here. Um, is it the $50 call or the $100 call? You know, those are, that's the strike price. That's the, the actual option you're going to buy and you're going to pay money for that option. Okay. So right here is where we are on our cheat sheet here. Call option premiums are quoted in dollars and cents per contract. Okay, that contract, one contract, is the equivalent of 100 shares of stock. So whatever you see that option price uh, in the option chain, or if someone says, hey, that option cost me five bucks, you have to multiply that option price by 100, because there's 100 shares of stock in each option contract. So let's just say right here, the $50 call costs $2.50 per contract. That's an actual cost of $250. Okay, so you're multiplying the 250 $2.50 $2 by 100 there's your cost 250 bucks okay just so we're all on the same page there and that's basically the the essence of you know what call options are they have a strike price they have their own price which is called the premium you have to multiply that price by 100 to get the actual cost now you may be saying, okay, well, what, you know, the, what's the whole point of, of buying the, the option? Number one, I said, because it costs a lot less than buying 100 shares of stock. But at the same time, you have other decisions you have to make. Do you want to buy an in-the-money strike, an at-the-money strike, or an out-of-the-money strike? Okay, these are more decisions you have to make. And which expiration are you going to choose? Do you want a, a one-day option, a one-week option, a one-month option? So we're going to look at a couple different couple different scenarios here to help you figure out you know how do I choose you know what's the best option strike to choose okay because there's lots of different lots of different choices and lots of different options that's why they're called options so we're gonna look at an actual trade here we're gonna look at a uh, some options on Apple and 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 try to figure out you know what you know which one would be better to buy and we're gonna look at the return on investment and the probabilities of that option being profitable for you okay it'll help you decide once you if if and when you ever want to buy call options in the future here's a process that you'll have to go through to figure out you know which which option contract which call option should I buy and you know being in the business for 30 years now what I found is that you know successful long-term successful options trading comes down to probability right here where my mouse is since there's always a, an expiration date and the stock always has to move by a cert, to a certain level in order for you to be profitable. It all comes down to probability. What is the likelihood of stock X reaching st price X by X date? Okay, so there's a lot of things involved to be a successful long-term option buyer. I'm not talking about option selling. We're talking about option buying. So you have to be able to figure out, you know, where that stock's going to go by a certain date and will the stock be able to make that move by that date and that's where the probabilities come in we're going to look at the probability calculator and fig and see you know what are the chances of this strike price performing the way we want okay the other thing you need to know is before you ever buy a call option is you have to know what the the break even price will be you have to know where the stock needs to go to for you at least to break even on the trade. Okay, that's very important. So <clears throat> you always know need to know your break even and you need to know your probabilities of that stock getting to the break even. All right, so we're going to look at a some, you know, fictional examples of call options we can buy on Apple and figure out, you know, what which one would be the best option to buy okay so we're scrolling down here we're looking we're looking at the the uh we're going to use apple as our our stock today so 
Um, let's go to the chart. We're going to we're going to start flipping back and forth here. OK, we're going to look at um, we're going to open up Apple here. So here's a here's a daily chart of Apple. Let's just say you're, you're bullish on Apple. You want to buy some Apple. You don't want to buy the stock because with Apple's price at one hundred and forty six dollars a share, 100 shares would cost you over fourteen thousand dollars. OK, so you figure, you know what? I want to buy some call options because the call options will cost me a lot less in dollars. And but I need to figure out, you know, which call option I should buy. Now, obviously, if you're going to buy call options on Apple, that means you're bullish. So you think Apple's going to go up sometime in the future. As we know, here's a chart of Apple, um, you know, back in January of 2022 back here. You know, Apple went down, started trading sideways. So Apple's been not really doing anything. But your hope is that Apple is going to go up in 2023. So you want to get bullish. You want to buy some call ups. So that's looking at the chart first. You know, whenever you decide to, to be bullish on the stock, it's good to look at the charts to see where the stock's been, where, you know, where it may be headed. OK, so we've decided we're bullish on Apple. We want to buy some call options. So let's go back to our, our cheat sheet here. <clears throat> So we're going to look at a we're going to look at three different call option contracts and figure out you know what it would cost, what are the probabilities, and uh, what kind of returns we can make at different prices of Apple at expiration. Okay, so we're, we're going to use the the assumption Apple closed yesterday, Friday, um, February twenty fourth, twenty twenty three, at one hundred and forty six dollars and forty cents. The question is, which call option should we buy? OK, we're going to use the May expiration. Let's go to our um, option chain here. This is at Interactive Brokers. Um, this is the option chain that I use. Here's Apple. I've got my Apple options up here. So we're going to look at the May options uh, that expire in 83 days. And here's the, you know, some of the strike prices here we're going to look at. Um, here's the the last prices yesterday. Uh, we look at the bid and ask that that'll give us the 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 most current accurate prices for Apple okay and these are some of the strike prices and so we're going to go back to our cheat sheet here so we're going to look at the $120 in the money call a $145 at the money call and $175 out of the money call option okay if we if we go back to the option chain here there's the 120 call here we got the at the money 145 call and an out of the money 175 call. These are the three strike prices we're going to look at to help us figure out which one we should buy. OK, so. <clears throat> um, an in the money call option, just if you're unfamiliar with the terms in the money, at the money and out of the money in the money means the strike price, the strike of the option is situated below the current price of the stock. Apple's at 146. The 120 call strike is below the price of Apple. OK, the 145 at the money call at the money means the strike price is very similar to the current price of the stock. And then out of the money call right here, the 175 call is situated well above the current price of the stock. OK, those are in the money, at the money and out of the money. Now, the out of the money calls are the ones that most people uh, focus on the most because they're the cheapest in dollar terms. So they figured out, well, I'm just going to buy a really cheap option. It only costs me a few dollars, whatever. And if if I win, I win. Um, and like I said, that's not really the, the right way to go about long term profitability in the options market. So let's go back to our uh, option chain here. So number one, the 120 call is worth about $29.25 per contract. We're going to we split the bid ask right here somewhere in the middle. So the 120 calls is worth $29.25. The 145 at the money calls are worth $10.20 per contract and the 175 calls are worth 85 cents a contract. Okay, we got three different options, three different prices, and then we're going to look at the probabilities and profits and and returns on all these three things at different prices of Apple at expiration. OK, so follow me with the math here. We got some math involved, but these are the things you have to do to, you know, pick your best option strike. OK, so with Apple at one forty six dollars and forty cents, the one twenty in the money call costs two thousand nine hundred and twenty five dollars. 
Now remember, 100 shares of Apple is going to cost you $14,640. So you always want to compare the cost of the option to the cost of buying 100 shares of stock. 100 shares of Apple is $14,460. The 120 in the money call costs $2,925. It's a lot less than the $14,000. Okay, now here's the really important part. What is the break even on that call option? Now, in order to figure out what the break even is, you have to take the strike price, the the strike itself, and add the option cost to it. So the break even, which is you got the 120, so you take 120 and you add twenty nine dollars and twenty five cents to it. Twenty nine dollars and twenty five cents is the actual cost of that contract before we multiply by 100. Put those two together. So Apple needs to get up to $149.25 just to break even. Apple only needs to move another $2.85 in order to break even on the trade. So Apple's at $146.40. Do you think it can move up $2.85 in the next 83 days? That's the thing that you have to ask yourself, and we're going to check the probability calculator in a second. Now, the 145 at the money calls cost ten dollars and twenty cents per contract, so that's a thousand dollars and twenty cents. Okay, it costs less than this one, but it's still less than the four, a lot less than the fourteen thousand it costs to buy the shares of stock. So uh, the 145 calls has a break-even price of 155.20 at Apple. So Apple stock needs to move $8.80 just to break even by May expiration. So do you think Apple can go from 146.40 all the way up to 155.20 in the next 83 days? We check the probability calculator, okay? Now I've already have the probabilities listed here and I'm gonna show you uh, how to use that in the, in the calculator. So the probability of Apple moving $2.85 in the next 83 days is 44%. You have a 44% chance of that happening. With the at the money calls, there's a 32.5% chance of that happening. Now we're looking at these 175 calls also, which only cost 85 bucks. It's a lot less than 1,020 and a lot less than $2,925. Most people will opt for these cheapies because they're cheap and they don't want to spend a lot of money. But the break even of Apple is $175.85. So Apple's at $146.40. It's got to travel almost $30 to just break even in the next 83 days. Do you want to, are you willing to have to wait for the stock to move almost $30 just to break even on a trade? Well, that's the thing, that's the, that's the, the balancing, the, the trade off you have to make here. Yeah, I know it only costs $85 for that option. But now you have to wait for Apple to move up $30 at expiration. That's if you're going to hold all the way to expiration. There's another key point here is that when you buy an option, are you willing to, are you going to hold all the way through expiration just to see if, you know, you're going to give it as much time as possible. You want to give Apple as much time as possible to make that move. Because what if Apple makes that whole $30 move on that very last day of expiration? So that's what people like to do. They like to hold the option all the way to expiration, hoping that the stock's going to make that move by them. But what if Apple jumps $30 on the first day after you bought the option? Are you going to cash out then? Or, you know, what if Apple drops back down $30 on day two? So there's always that, there's always that, that, that thing in people's heads thinking, well, how long should I give the trade to work? Should I hold it all the way to the end? Well, what if Apple makes the move in the first five days? And if I don't take my profit, Apple turns back down and, and then I then I give up all my gains. So this is something that you have to worry about or think about when you're trading options. So you have to decide, you know, am I going to have a stop loss? Am I going to have a, a profit point? If I make 50% on the option, do I do I scale out? Do I sell out? What do I do? So these are things that you have to think about. All right. So let's look at let's look at the um our probabilities here. Let's go to our our, um, our probability calculator, okay, and figure out you know how we come up with some of these numbers. All right. 
the probability calculator is, is a great tool that, that helps us understand, you know, what are the chances of stock A moving to point B in X amount of time? Now up here, I put in the input numbers. We got Apple's current price. We've got 83 days in the future and the volatility, the future volatility is 27%. Okay, that's where Apple's current volatility is. So our first break even price was, let's go back here, um, 149 and a quarter. So we want to see what are the chances of it hitting 149 and a quarter. So in the, we're going to put the same target in both boxes, 149 and a quarter, hit go. Okay, so finishing above the highest target, that's what we want. We want to know Apple's chances of finishing above 149 and a quarter. That's to at least get us to break even. 44%. Okay, so that's where I got the 44% here. Now remember, when you buy a stock, you're never going to have more than a 50-50 chance, 50% 50 chance of being right. If you buy a stock at 100, the very next tick of that stock could be 101 cent or 99.99 cents. You never have more than a 50% chance of winning when you buy a stock. So when you buy an option, you want that probability to be, you know, kind of close to the, the same stock probability. And when you buy an in the money, an in the money call option contract, your probability is going to be almost the closest to the stock's probability of 50%. So we got 44% here. Now our next target was the 145 calls has to get to 155.20, 20. So we change it here, 155.20, and this is 155.20, we hit go. So here's your probability, 32.5% of just breaking even. And then the 175 calls is 175.85, so we change the price here. Do it in both boxes, hit go, and there's your 7.7%, okay? So once again, it's a balancing act. Do you want a higher probability of winning, but that's going to cost more money for the option contract? Do you, want a, do you want a cheaper option? If you do, then your probability of winning is going to be very low, okay, right here. So which do you choose? Well, we're going to look at, let's go and now see what happens when Apple moves to a certain price. Okay. Uh, here's what we're going to do. What happens if Apple moves to $150 at expiration in May? So here's, here's what the numbers are going to tell us. The stock purchase will make $360. If you bought the, bought the stock at $146.40 and now it's at $150. You've made $360 with a return on investment of 2.45%. The 120 call is now worth $30 per contract. You have to take the, the, the stock price at expiration and you minus out the strike price. 150 minus 120 equals 30. That's what the, the 120 call is worth at expiration. But remember, you paid $29.25 for it to begin with. So your profit is... To 75 bucks. Your dollar profit is $75, which is less than the, the stock purchase profit. But your return on investment is 2.5%, which is better than the stock return on investment. Okay? So you've got a little do less dollars in profit, but your return on investment is better. The 145 call is now worth $5 at expiration. Okay, 150 stock price minus the strike price, strike price of 145. That option is worth $5 a contract now, but you paid $10.20 for it. So you actually have a loss of $520 and a return on investment of minus 100%. You're losing your whole investment. I'm sorry, this is this is not it's not 100%. You lo you lost about 50%. That that is a typo on my mistake there. So you've lost about half of your investment. So you lost about 50% of your investment. Scratch that out. Make it about a negative 50% loss. Still you're losing. Okay. Even though the stock went up, it went up from 146.40 up to 150. Stock moved in your direction, but you ended up losing on the option purchase. You lost $520 and you lost about 50% return on investment. 
Now the 175 call is worthless. The stock didn't get up to 175. So you lost your $85. Now this one is a, is a total loss of 100%. You lost the whole um, investment. Okay. So it, it all depends on where the stock, how far the stock gets to. Okay. So now let's look at another scenario here. When Apple's at 175 at expiration, the stock purchase makes $2,860 with a return on investment of 9.5%, 19.5%, I'm sorry. Okay. But remember, you had to shell out 14, over $14,000 for the stock purchase. The 120 in the money call is now worth $55 per contract. That's a profit of $2,575. It's a couple hundred dollars less than the stock purchase, but look at the return on investment, 88%. 88% versus 19.5%. And the reason why it's so much higher is because you only have to put out, you put out a lot less money to buy that call option. <clears throat> okay. Now the 145 call is now worth $30 per contract. And it only costs, it costs you $10.20 to buy it. So your profit is $1,980. It's less than the stock purchase less than the 120 calls profit, the actual dollar profit, but the return on investment is 194%. You take your, your profit and you divide it by your initial investment. That's how you figure out return on investment. Now the 175 calls, um, they're gonna expire worthless as well because Apple only got up to 175. It didn't get above to the break even. So once again, if you bought that 175 call, you're going to lose 100% of your investment. So Apple moved, you know, the, the $29, $30 that you were hoping, but if you bought those 175 calls, you're losing your whole investment. It, it wasn't even worth you buying, spending $85 to buy those things. So bottom line here is what's the best option to choose? It's all going to depend on your, your stock predicting skills and how much and how far the stock goes. It's all a crapshoot. You don't know how far the stock's going to go. You don't know when it's going to get there. You know, what if Apple um, makes the move finally in June after all your May options expired? And you'd be kicking yourself, say, oh, if I only bought, you know, an extra month of time, I would have made the money. So there's still that which strike and which expiration date do I choose? Okay. The bottom line is that, you know, to get the, the best possible chance of, of making money or, or being as close to the break even as the stock is buying these in the money calls. Okay, they're always going to cost more than the at the money or out of the money calls, but your, your chance of profiting, profiting is higher. Your probability of profiting is higher. Now, most people, a lot, I should say a lot of people will argue with me saying, you know, the at the money calls are probably the best, the best ones to buy. Yeah, they're going to be cheaper than the in the money calls and your return on investment could be better, but that's all dependent on if the stock moves in the right direction. So you as an investor has to decide, you know, which strike price is best, which expiration date is best. How far, how much do I think the stock's going to move? And that's why the probability calculator can help. All right. So there's a lot involved with, you know, buying single individual call options. There's a lot of decisions that you have to make. And that's why, probably why a lot of people either they give up or they get frustrated because they can't figure it out or they, 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 they take their chances on these out of money calls and they lose a couple rounds and they just give up completely. So, you know, you're going to hear a lot in the news. You're going to hear from these other websites saying, ah, oh, you know, Watch us, you know, we'll make you so much money. All you got to do is buy call options. It's harder than that. I've been in this business for 30 years. It, it's not as easy as, as people make it out to seem. So there's your initial lesson on, you know, how to buy call options, what they are, how they're priced, how they move, probabilities and all that. So I, I hope I hope this has given you an idea of, you know, the basics of call option buying. Um, you know, reread through the, the, the PDF here, the... Um, let me close that a little bit. Read through the PDF, you know, go through it again, understand how these things move, 
move myself over here a little bit see <laughs> trying to figure out what's the best placement here so you can see everything anyway i hope it's been helpful you know give me a thumbs up in this uh, video uh, it really helps the youtube algorithm you know if i get the thumbs up and and, and you subscribe here and you know you know leave comments i want to help as many people as possible so you know by by you helping me this thing could could reach a lot of different people all right so um leave me a comment send me an email i'll always answer and before we leave don't forget to go to our website and we want to although we're talking about call option buying today this is our free put selling basics ebook. If you have not downloaded, if you've not signed up for this thing yet, please do go to our website, smartoptionseller.com. Go to the put selling basics header here, put your name and email address in it. We'll send you an email with a link to download the free copy. All right. That's all for me today. Hope this has been helpful and I hope everyone has a great weekend and a great trading week ahead. This is Lee Lowell signing off.